Good evening. By the time we get started, we just thank the Lord for another beautiful day that is above freezing. Oh, uh, well, I tell you, it's, it's just good to be out and have a night. I've got a lot of folks sick. Travelers, let's pray for that. For the safety. Pray for the service tonight. Don't know really how this is going to go. Kind of got an idea, but that's my idea. <laughs> but anyway, we thank the Lord for this time and, and uh, just the opportunity to stand for Him. And, uh, we know we're few in number, so we'll uh, take prior to first. first. Uh, continue to remember Elaine Taylor. She's uh, two weeks in the hospital. She still can't eat nothing without throwing up. Drink, even drink anything without throwing up. Stomach. It sounds like stomach cancer and a couple more issues. It don't sound good. And they, they can't. Send her home because she can't keep up with that. Let's pray for that. Pray for each other. Really pleased to have them. I'll pray for Kitty. How's anybody heard of last day too? Um, still having extreme pain. She did see a doctor today. Um, also changed the pain medication. She basically told her she's still going to have to pay for Mr. Slack. And if she wanted to get better, and that she is dehydrated. And so she's having to. Uh, for school for the next few more hours and tomorrow if she's not improved as far as the hydration goes she might be nice and hungry so that's not fun but they said she needs to take her medicine so we all know what to do God, for our life, God. 
Lord, help us to live a life circumspectly, God, before our children, before the children of our church, God. Lord, take us to see Jesus in our life, dear God. That they might see something, God, uh, Lord, through your uh, word, through your spirit, God, Lord, uh, that they desire to look into, God. Lord, that this world's offering them everything, God, but the truth, Father. Help us to stand on that, God, and to present it to them, God, uh, Lord, the undiluted, God, Father, just a pure word of God. Father, we pray your will be done. Touch these in need. Lord, tonight we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
We're going to be starting a, a new year here in a few days, Andy. We, knew, we know, and we all do it, probably. Uh, I've not tried to make any, uh, but every New Year's, we know we've got a lot of people that make some New Year's resolutions. I'm going to change this this year. I'm going to do this this year. I'm going to get, get in better shape this year. And we know that some things that we're able to achieve, and some things we fall short just in a week or so. But they was a situation that was in uh, mankind's life that we could not do nothing about. And that word reconciliation, we know today, and we'll look at that here just a little bit later uh, uh, in the message tonight uh, about what that means. But here, uh, as we look at this year, we you know we we uh, want to change things as, as we're starting a new year, but. But I want to look at a man here named Paul, and we, we've been studying a lot here in Acts 13 and 14 the past few months, and, and we'll probably be there for a, a while longer. But here in verse 1, as we see here, Paul and Barnabas, they've been preaching, they've been persecuted, they went to another city here, another region of there, and it said it came to pass in Icon uh, that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. And so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also the Greeks, believed. So we see here what made the difference. What was the message that they preached here that, that a multitude of people believed, uh, Jews and uh, Greeks or Gentiles. As we look at this here, uh, of my friends tonight, and, and we see here that the message, uh, uh, they so spake, uh, the message was Jesus. The message was about Jesus because there is no other message. As we look at this here today, uh, it's all about Jesus. And as we look at this here, the, the man that was just preaching here, Paul, uh, he was the primary uh, speaker. Uh, and as we look at this here, the message that he was preaching, he was preaching Jesus. Uh, my friend, what was that? Uh, as we look at that here, we could ask uh, uh, many questions uh, about that tonight. But over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I want to go over here and read a, a couple of verses here about the message uh, uh, that was being preached here. Uh, uh, Paul, as we look at this year, verse, uh, let me read verse 1 through 5 here in chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians. Uh, it says, And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency, excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I have determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So we see here that, that Paul, uh, uh, his message was Jesus. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Paul was a man of like passion, as we see here. I mean, he, he put his shoes on the same way we do, except he was called of God to preach Jesus. He was a very smart man, but he said, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So we see here, and we know that Paul, he talked about his ministry, that he didn't receive that of man, but he received it of God. And he says in verse 5, That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So we see here the message excuse me, that Paul was preaching was Jesus. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You pull this water, struggle with that cough for a little bit, but Paul pretty well had it whooped out. Praise God. But as we look at this here, Paul was one of the most educated men of his day. He talked about being brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. I mean, he was a, 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 a Hebrew of Hebrews. He declared his credentials there, uh, my friend. But we see here uh, that Paul. Uh, uh, we see here he was the most one of the most educated men of his time. But he said he came to him not with excellent speech or, or man's wisdom. Well, what happened? As we look at this year, we've got, we've got a point we're getting to. Uh, my friend today talking about the, of what happened and, and you know we want to do some New Year's resolutions about uh, changing this and changing that but there was something that we could not change that we could not do nothing about and that was reconcile ourselves back to God. 
We could not do that. There was a separation. Man's sinfulness for God's righteousness. They had preached many times. We've heard that. But we know what he was talking about. Over here in Philippians, I'm going to go over here and read uh, over here a, a few verses here in Philippians chapter 3. Paul is speaking over here. And as we uh, look at this here, let me just start, let me just start back over here at verse 1. Paul preaching here, right here, he says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing to you, to me, indeed, it's not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concessions, for we are of their circumcision which, circumcision which forces God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We couldn't uh, 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 get good enough. Well, we couldn't be good enough. Uh, and my friend, we couldn't help no one else along the way uh, in the condition that we were in. But we see here, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if by any man think that he hath a whereof he must trust in the flesh, I more. So we see here, what happened to Paul that he preached there in, in, in Acts chapter 14, verse 1, in the synagogue of the Jews, that a multitude of Jews and Greeks believed upon the word that he was preaching, upon the, the message about Jesus that he had preached to them. What happened to Paul that, that he could do that? And we'll look at that in a moment. But we see here, he, he said, if I had confidence in flesh, if anybody could, I the more. Listen to what it says here. Though I might also have <coughs> confidence, if any mother, <coughs> or verse. Verse 5, I'm, I'm verse 4, doesn't read that. <coughs> Listen to the vision. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews, that's touching the law of fire sea. My goodness, listen to the credentials he had. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is of the law, Blameless. Now, boy, you talk about. <coughs> he was way up there. Having confidence in the flesh. And we know that, that, that the concern of the law, I mean, as we see here, righteousness which is of the law, uh, blameless. Uh, we know uh, the law brought us guilty, as, as, as Ed, as, as he presents that to us many times, as we see here, but the law could not save us. It showed us our sin, it brought us guilty. My friend, and the righteousness which of the law. I mean, Paul, he said that he was blameless in that. But, verse 7, but what things were gained to me, though I count to those I count lost for Christ, yet doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do count them but as dumb that I might win Christ. Boy, I tell you, there was something about this man named Jesus that changed Paul's life. And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith that I might know Him in the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto His death. Boy, I tell you, He's saying a mouthful right there. When you get studying that out, I mean, all this that He had, He counted it all but lost that He might win Christ, knowing the sufferings that He's going to be. But it goes on, if by any means I might obtain the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, but or either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may ap be, uh, that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. What made the difference in Paul's life as we look at this year, uh, uh, my friend today, uh, that he was able to stand and preach there in that sin to God that a multitude of people were saved? The message that he pe preached about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. We go back over here in chapter 9 here in the book of Acts and we see what made the difference. My friend, the message that he was preaching there was Jesus uh, uh, crucified uh, as we see here. Uh, and we know the story over here, but I want to read this 
of here real quickly here and let it see what makes a difference uh, in Paul's life or Saul of Tarsus's life and what makes a difference in our life today. I mean, as we see here, uh, uh, we, Paul was a, 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 a Hebrew of Hebrew. I mean, he was a Pharisee. Uh, I mean, as far as keeping the law, he said he was perfect, persecuting the church. But what made a difference, uh, my friend, today, if there's something in your life and, and you uh, uh, come New Year's Eve uh, and you say, oh, I want to get rid of this and I want to do better, and I, I tell you what, and you make, a, you make a resolution or a promise to yourself or to somebody, I'm going to do better this year. I'm going to quit drinking or I'm going to quit doing drugs or I'm going to quit stepping out on my wife. It won't work. I tell you what will work. Jesus. Amen. That's what made the difference in Paul, uh, to, uh, Paul, uh, Paul's life here, Saul of Tarsus. That's what made the difference. That's what enabled him to stand there and that sin to God there in Acts 14 and preach uh, that a multitude of people were saved. Uh, my friend, today it, it was been born again, uh, washed in the blood, and the Holy Ghost filled uh, my friend uh, preaching the Word of God there. That's what made the difference. And that's what will make the difference in our life today. Uh, it won't be no New Year's resolution. It'll be repenting of our ungodly ways and turning to the Lord Jesus for help. He is our strength. He is our stronghold. He is that high tower. As we look at this year, but over here, I want to read this real quickly here in chapter 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord, went with the, to the high priest and desired him letters to Damascus and to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men, women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, I like to put book God. I wrote book God right there uh, beside this verse here. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? I mean, he was a very, very, very religious man. This man saw Tarsus. He thought he was doing God a favor by putting these folks to death and putting these folks in prison. But here on this road, that there was something and someone that made a difference in Paul that saw Tarsus' life. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said to him, I am Jesus. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. See, he wasn't just persecuting the church, uh, my friend. He was persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would you have me to do? I want you to remember that question right there. Very important question. Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do in this year, uh, 2023? that I might make a difference in some child's life, in one of my children's lives, or, or one of my grandchildren's lives, or, or in some church, church, uh, church child there that I might make a difference in their life. Lord, what would you have me to do? And the Lord said <clears throat> to him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into uh, Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and choir in the house of Judas uh, for one Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. So we see here that while uh, Paul has been three days without sight, without water, without food, he's been praying. And hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias said, Lord, I've heard of many. I've heard of many of this man. How much evil he hath done to the saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority 
I'm the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Verse 15, 16. What made a difference in Paul's life that he could stand and preach? It was Jesus. What was the message that he preached? It was Jesus. How did he get his righteousness? It was Jesus. It's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this right here. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear, listen to this, to bear my name. There it is. To bear my name. How many people, I, I, I'm more guilty of this than anybody in here. How many people in the month of December have I mentioned Jesus to? In the name of Jesus. To bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and my people Israel. My friend today, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, my friend, makes a difference. That's what made the difference here when Saul of Tarsus encountered the Lord Jesus Christ here in his life. He was dynamically changed from this point on. His name was changed. His character was changed. His thoughtfulness and actions was changed. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. What made the difference? It was Jesus. And Jesus will make the difference in our life, in your life, in my life. Amen. As we look at this here today, what made the difference? What happened to Paul here uh, as we look at this here? I thought about this uh, when the, the first revival of Patrick ever preached was five weeks from here, sweet young. And Rusty Williams' dad was on the other side, was here that night. And he went back and told Rusty, been Good revival, y'all go. He asked who was preaching. He said, Patrick Godale. And Rusty said, Not the Patrick I know. Well, that was right. That was right because Patrick Godale, the old man, has been crucified. The new man was a different man. The new man, only through Christ Jesus, that's what made the difference. What made the difference when Saul of Tarsus met the Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus? What made the difference in Patrick's life was Jesus. What made the difference in my life was Jesus. Nothing good that I could do other than believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and finished work of Calvary. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm going to start reading here in verse 17. For we see here in, in the, the previous verses, we see verse 17 says, Therefore, and that's talking about, you read all the verses prior to this, and it comes down to this. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, <coughs> that makes a difference right there. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature, a new creation. My friend today, and you've heard me tell this before, the day, the, the afternoon or the night over there at Panther Creek uh, over 30 some years ago when I met the Lord Jesus, my friend, I could go two weeks maybe, Andy, uh, out of uh, drinking or drugs. Maybe. My goodness, I could go maybe two weeks. But when I met the Lord Jesus over there that night, by His grace, that quick, those cravings, those desires were taken away. I know everybody has a different situation, but that's what happened in my life. I was a new man. I became a new creature. My family and things have never been the same since. But Jesus is what made the difference in my life. And that's what will make the difference in your life. Uh, and if you're here tonight and you're struggling with situations in your life, it'll be Jesus the one that will help you tonight. It won't be no New Year's resolution or turning over a new leaf because I've tried that many times. I'm trying to do better and turn over those leaves. There's a lot of leaves out there in the forest. 
But I tell you what, there's only one Jesus, my friend and I, and that'll make a difference. Listen, what all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, uh, my friend, today. A new creature, a new life, a second chance. Thank God that He's a God of second chances. He'd have been right just to snuff me out way, way back there. Bringing shame and reproach upon His name and upon my family. My friend, I tell you what, God is gracious. He's merciful and He's long-suffering. And we read the rest of this, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. As we look at this year, man was in a condition, man was in a situation that he could do nothing about uh, that sin. Uh, as we see our sinful nature, uh, my friend, and then we see God and His righteousness and His goodness and His holiness, there's a separation. But there was only one way that man could be reconciled back unto God. It says it right there. Reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ, by His Son. As we see here, God loves a sinner. God loves a sinner. Romans 5 and 8 tells us, But God commended His love for us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us, my friend. My, uh, my, we, we see here <coughs> in His holiness, God had to judge sin. So therefore, as we see that our sins was laid upon the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary, the sin as John the Baptist declared, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. There had to be a sacrifice once and for all as we look at this year, and that was the Lamb of God. The one that Pat preached about that was slain before the foundations of the world. The, that Lamb of God, this uh, Jesus Christ, God's Holy Son, righteous Son, as we see here, the sins, our sins, your sins was laid upon Him. The iniquity of us all, uh, my friends, as we see here, when God looked at that, uh, when God looked at us, we see our sinfulness, uh, and we see His holiness, uh, but we see here that, that, uh, that, that all things are of God who reckon, has reconciled us to Himself. By Jesus Christ, uh, as we see here, uh, we look at that here today. Uh, and my friend, when God looked at uh, His Son there at Calvary, uh, as we see here, uh, my friend, uh, as we look at that, the uh, wrath of God was appeased when, when Jesus Christ died for our sins. And therefore, if we accept Him for the finished work at Calvary, then we're reconciled unto God through Christ Jesus. Uh, those uh, who were made back in the right standing with Him. But it's only through Jesus. And then Paul was a preaching to those folks there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Why was He crucified? My friend, today as we look, it had to be that way. It, it had to be that spot of sinless Lamb of God that died once and for all. As we see in Hebrews, that took away the sins of the world. And when we accept that message, when we believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ as we see here and confess our sins, repent of our sins and turn to God, He saved us. Uh, you know what I'm talking about if you've been saved. Uh, he saved us. He cleansed us and He put us back into right standing with Him, my friend and I. Not anything good that we could have done other than believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Be ye reconciled to God. Amen. That atonement that was made there at Calvary, <laughs> it appeased God's wrath. Therefore, we're saved by grace through faith. That not of ourselves. To wit, verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. My friend, today, uh, this word. <coughs> As we see the message that we bring, we try to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. We try to warn them about the wrath of God that's on sin, my friend, today as we look at this year. And it don't have to be that way. You can repent of your sins. You can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be saved, my friend, and have all the blessings that come with it. But it goes on. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. 
You say once we, he saved us, uh, as we see here, once uh, the soul was saved and changed, uh, uh, his journey was just beginning. His work was just beginning, my friend. You can read there back in chapter 19, or not 19, over here in Acts chapter 9. I'm going to read part of one more verse right here real quickly. <clears throat> When he was talking to uh, Ananias over there to, to tell him he was a chosen vessel, there in verse 15 he says, verse 16, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. How great things he must suffer. Everywhere Paul went, he had persecutions. He had afflictions. He had people, uh, as we see here in chapter 14, we'll get to in a few weeks, starts teaching how he was stoned and drug out of the city. They thought he was dead. Suffered. He mentions all those things that he suffered. But he said, out of them all, the Lord delivered me. But as we see here, he's got, now then we are ambassadors, and we know what an ambassador is of the United States. It's got ambassadors in all these foreign countries, and what they're doing, they're representing the United States over there in some foreign land. My friends, we have been born again. We've been washed in blood. We've been saved. We're ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ wherever we're at. You see, we're in a foreign land. <laughs> My home's in glory. I'm going there someday too. May not be long. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. For he hath made him to be, listen to this, for he hath made him to be sin who knew no sin. You read Isaiah 53. He laid on him the iniquity of us all. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. The righteousness of God in Him. Boy, I tell you what, there's nothing good about Gary Jones other than the Lord Jesus Christ and what He has imputed unto me, what He put in there. Because I couldn't muster up any goodness myself. And you can't read it. The name Jesus. Believing upon the Lord Jesus made the difference. That's what enabled Paul to preach with the power of the Holy Ghost that people would believe and be saved. And as we go on any any time longer, it would be by the Lord Jesus Christ. Trusted in Him. So, New Year's Eve, when we all stand there to make a resolution, Think seriously about the name of Jesus. That's going to be our help. That's going to be the thing. That's going to be the one that helps us overcome any of these obstacles in our life. Whatever it may be. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this privilege. We thank you, God, for your people here tonight. We ask you to just bless them beyond measure, Father Lord, tonight. Lord, watch over us. Bless those in need. These has been mentioned. God stands in great need of a healing from you, God. Heal them, Lord, according to your will. Lord, watch over us. Watch over our families. And bless us as we enter into a new year. Lord, we just keep on keeping on for you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.